Welcome back, everybody. My name is Taylor Martin. This is the best damn EDC. And it's time for another EDC Weekly. And several weeks ago now, I asked you guys to submit your best modified carries. I didn't actually get a lot of modified carries. There were tons of submissions, but only some modified. So I picked my favorites and uh, kind of bent the rules a little bit with some of them, but we'll, we'll get to that. And some of the stuff was actually pretty interesting, caught me off guard, um, but you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. But that's what this episode's all about, modified carries. And with that said, let's do the damn thing. There's really only one announcement this week, and that is patches. You guys asked if I was going to restock them because the first batch sold out very quickly. Yes, they're back in stock as of right now. Well, they were today as of noon. Hopefully, they're still in stock by the time this video goes live. If not, uh, there will be more and many other designs as well. So just stay tuned. There will be more. And uh, if you haven't missed them already today, they're in the store right now. So go check that out and uh, it'll be linked down below. But with that out of the way, the very first submission this week comes from Matt or Peculiar EDC over on Instagram. I wouldn't say this carry is super modified, but there are some customizations here and some customized pieces like the Swiss Army Knives. But first up, we have a Keru Custom Barlow. I've never heard of that, but I really, really like the way that looks. He also has a modded Swiss Army Knife by Beaver Blade Works and a modded Swiss Army Knife from Triangle Tools. He doesn't mention what those are, but they look like a pioneer or maybe a cadet. It looks like a pioneer to me, but I could be wrong. And then finally, the bottom right is a Benchmade bug out with Flytanium brass scales. He also has a uh, Raylight pineapple in the top right in brass and some bolt action pin in brass in the top left. There's two of them actually. I don't know who makes that bolt action. I've seen it before. I don't know who makes that. Couldn't tell you. But Matt says he is looking for a brass watch. Good luck. Um, it's really not easy to find a brass watch. Most watch companies that use some form of brass alloy is gonna be more of a bronze usually, um, as indicated by my Baiko from Oris. There's also a Yima. I didn't know that they made a Baiko in bronze, um, but there are full bronze case watches, but you really don't see brass or copper. I think somebody later asks for a copper watch not gonna happen. Brass and copper watches, um, there could be something out there that I don't know of, but most of the time uh, a watch like that that's gonna patina is gonna be bronze. And and my understanding for why they use bronze, uh, and I could be wrong, but I'm pretty sure it's because a lower lead content and also it's a little tougher than brass. Brass and copper or soft bronze is a little bit harder and a lower lead content. And I think those two are correlated. Anyway, uh, Matt also says, I'm excited about this episode as I love EDC that's been changed to make it your own. Absolutely, that's why I did this. I love my Barlow knife. It is a one of one, which makes it unique to me. Little things like changing the scales on my bug out make it feel more like my knife. And that's 100% the reason for doing this. I love seeing people modify stuff, one, to fit their style, but also two, to fit their needs. Sometimes the product that you buy doesn't have everything that you want and being able to modify it, like I did with my uh, Leatherman Free P2, I swapped the blades on it and put some different tools on there. I did that because I wanted the perfect Leatherman, right? So yeah, that, that's why I do these modified carries and, and love modified gear. But yeah, that Kru, I'm, I'm not familiar with that company. Karoo, Kru, I don't know how it's pronounced. I love that. I absolutely love that knife and I want one now, really bad. Anyway. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, you have an awesome carry and you now have a second entry into the giveaway. The next mission comes from Mike Tashler or Luxworks over on Instagram. Um, and obviously you're gonna see this why I chose this one. It's 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 basically the knife, but he has a Spidanel or a Spiderco Dragonfly blade in an Opinel number eight handle. He also has an open sea leather mini top cider that has been restitched. He has a big Ida Design mini bolt action pin, as well as a Victorinox mini champ with daily custom dyed micarta scales and a custom Ultim bead. And then finally, underneath everything is a Gentle Fox carry handkerchief. Mike says, hey, Taylor. Uh, first of all, thanks for the dope content. You're welcome. Thank you for watching. He also says, my carry changes a lot, but at the moment, the black and Ultim color combination is dominant. My most recent mod is the Spyderco Opinel Hybrid. I had a lot of spare parts laying around, including this Dragonfly blade, so I decided to upcycle a bit. I hope you like it. I do indeed. Uh, and he says, thanks and keep up the hard work. That's really cool. I've not seen that done before. Um, 
That's cool. You've also added a little sharpening choil to the dragonfly. That, uh, that's something that I think every spider co is in <laughs> dire need of. They run the, the blade right up to the plunge line and there's no sharpening choil. It should be a tiny choil there to separate the, the plunge line from the blade. Uh, it just, it bugs me. If you don't have the perfect angle on your sharpening system, you're gonna just muck up that plunge line. But anyway, uh, that is a really cool modification. I've not seen that done before. Really, really nice. And I love the, the mini champ as, as a whole. I love that knife, but um, seeing it with my Carta is just really, really good. Um, he doesn't really mention, but he did restitch this. He didn't say with what, but, or what with, but it looks like he just switched the, the thread out to match the black and ultim theme. So very, very cool. Thank you for sharing. Now, the next one comes from Parker, who is over in the Discord as Parker, or on Instagram as Rocky Top Customs. I know that he had another submission, but he didn't get it in in time. Um, but I selected this one because I watched both of these products or, or customizations, modifications come to life. I watched them happen in the Discord. So it's really cool that he submitted this stuff so I could actually talk about it. Anyway, he says, these pieces are the core of my carry and the modifications I have personally done to them. Nothing too complicated, but sometimes the simple mods are the best ones. So first up, the knife that you see in this photo is a Wilson Combat StarTac Umnumzan S45VN that has been Cerakoted with OD green scales, and then he has bead blasted hardware, a Rips Garage Tech milled clip, and then a J2H or Jekyll to Hide V3 backspacer, and then an OD green Cerakoted nuke bead. The pen that you see to the right of that is an Overlander from Tactile Turn. He says, this one I received secondhand and was well loved. Most of the Cerakote had worn off and some had chipped off, so I redid the Cerakote. Also included are a Pete's Pirate Life coin in the bottom right, a Horian Shell Cordovan leather notebook cover made by the Donkey in the Discord with a Field Notes notebook inside, a Hitch and Timber knife roll, and a Best M EDC Ranger Eye in the center of the photo, which he has highlighted with some lines. Thank you very much for that. Parker says, I'm in a clear up phase, so head to the Discord to buy my gear. No, seriously, I'm at a point where I'm so satisfied with carrying a Chris Reeve knife that I'm challenging myself and getting rid of everything except two knives. The other knife is a Prometheus Design Works Chris Reeve Large Dimension 31 Kraken. I don't like to collect, and the uh, Wilson Combat Zahn is more knife than most people see in a lifetime. I'm trying to learn to be content. It's something we all could learn. Honestly, not looking for a promotion, but I do have a small knife modding business that I do my best to run in my spare time after my nine to five is over and my two year old is asleep. I started it in January and it's taught me so much about knives, how tight tolerances really are, how to push those tolerances and hopefully make a knife even better than it was before. It's a big experiment, a huge learning opportunity. And one day I hope to be able to use what I've learned to make my own folding knives. Well, you have modified one of mine. Actually, it's right here in pieces. This is a small and cozy, a PDW and cozy with the crack in on it. Uh, it is mid sharpened. So the knife is wrapped up in here. There's nothing done to this, but we have bronze anodized scales and then a black Cerakoted clip. Uh, I think that's everything that was done to it. I think the hardware might've been black Cerakoted as well. It looks really sick. Uh, here's a photo of it because it's disassembled right now. Anyway, uh, I'm happy to have purchased a modified knife from you. Came great. It was, it just needed an edge and I get started sharpening it and then life got crazy. So, Eventually, I will finish sharpening it, put it back together and carry it. But for now, it's all torn apart. Anyway, thank you for sharing, Parker. You now have a second entry into the giveaway, which apparently you don't want because you're content. The next submission comes from Brandon S or B S O H M over on Instagram. And uh, this one's not necessarily a carry, but it is a specific piece of his carry that has been modified. And this is really cool. Um, so there were two things in this list of submissions that I picked. Um, and both of them included a customized Skeletool, which I've never seen customized Skeletools, and, I, and there's apparently a lot of parts for them. That's really, really neat. I think the Skeletool is a great little pocket tool. I do wish they made one without a combo edge. That's beside the point. What we have here in this photo is a Leatherman Skeletool with a Sweet Tooth pry bar attachment. Um, he also asks for me to make an episode with watches starting at base and going up in price. But this right here, this sweet tooth pry bar attachment for the skeletal is really, really neat. So I used to carry a pry bar all the time and I do from time to time, especially when I feel like I'm going to need one turning a lot of screws or camera plates, whatever. If I'm out shooting in the field somewhere, I need to have something where I can just easily take the plate off the camera. So I'll grab a pry bar and throw it in my pocket or something, but something like this, where it's just built into the, the, the tool that you already have in your pocket, that 
is what it's all about. And of course I could bring a Leatherman or something and use that, but I'm, I'm just saying that's really neat. That's faster access than a Leatherman, like a, an, an internal flathead screwdriver because it's built into the handle. Like, I just think that's really cool. I'd never seen one of these before. That's really neat. Thank you for sharing, Brandon. And speaking of, the next submission comes from Kelsey K or the Great Wizard Jenkins over in the Discord server. And again, we have a customized Skeletool. So in this photo, what you see here is a Keysmart Titanium in the right of the photo. That is also next to a Timex Expedition Digital. And then we have the Leatherman Skeletool with a tater hammer and tip up clip, 3D printed steel parts from Metro Greg Goods over on Shapeways. Um, Next to that is a pen from Nightcore, the NTP31, and then also a Nightcore flashlight, the Tinny 2, just a little keychain light. And then finally to the bottom left of the photo is a custom 3D printed fidget with light switch and magnets. They say, I'm looking for a better or new wallet. I carry a significant amount of cash and can't really get on board with the front pocket wallet. So I feel like my options are limited, but looking into the OpenSea leather top sider, but I haven't pulled the trigger on it yet. I know this isn't very much a budget carry, but I tend to use the absolute shit out of my gear until it breaks, then upgrade from there based on what failed. It's a very good way to do things. Fairly new to the EEC community, but loving all the options for gear I've been carrying since I was a teen. The Skeletool has been my favorite multi-tool since I discovered it, but I lost two of them because the stock pocket clip failed and it fell out of my pocket. Same, I lost two of them, two of them. I also used to use the pliers hinge as an impromptu hammer, so having these mods makes it perfect for my most used EDC tool. There are other multi-tools I carry for other tasks, but this one has the most everything I need for day-to-day -day, uh, for both of my jobs, facility manager and a bartender, and doesn't have a ton of extra tools that add weight and never get used. I totally agree. I feel like the Skeletool is one of the best bare minimum tools that you can get. It's got some of the nicest sized pliers for the actual overall, like your ratio of plier size like, like your ratio of plier size to handle size when it's folded closed is really good in the Skeletool. Again, the only thing I don't really like about it is the combo edge on the blade. Like if it had a good seal and a, a plain edge, like that would be a really good single tool to carry. Like no knife, just a Skeletool, but doesn't exist yet. Make it happen. Make it happen, Leatherman. Anyway, so what you're seeing here is a little pommel on the clip end that's been added as well as a, a clip that reverses the, the pocket clip from the original one, I believe, because the other one is a is a tip down. This is a tip up. And uh, yeah, that's really neat. I, I didn't know that these modifications existed. I think this has prompted me to dive into the world of more Leatherman mods and uh, see what all is out there. I did one video on some stuff from Shapeways. I think it's time to do another. So. Thank you for shining a light onto this stuff for me. It's interesting to see someone who's new to this community showing people who've been in this world for a long time new stuff. Like, that's why I love this. That's why I love this show, this thing we do called the EDC Weekly, where I can learn stuff from people who are new to the community. That's awesome. I think that's great. So thank you for sharing. You now have a second entry into the giveaway. All right, the next to last submission this week comes from How, I believe, or Custom Casios over on Instagram. And I chose this one because of just the level of customization, all the tritium that's been added and glow fobs and glow everything. I think glow stuff, glow in the dark and tritium are fantastic. That's why I love this watch. I love having tritium on my watch. It's great. You don't have to charge it. You can be in the dark all day long and then still see what time it is. It doesn't have to charge with sunlight or a flashlight, it just always glows and that's just amazing. Regardless, right here we have a lot of tritium and glow in the dark stuff. And first up in this photo, we have the Lumintop LM10 with custom glow gaskets and tritium tubes. So that is the flashlight in the top left. Yeah, below that we have an Arc Company Rambler, which holds some of this gear. It's a little gear organizer from Arc Company. And then underneath that is a Gnome and Bow, Three Musketeers Felton, two-tone small coin slot bifold wallet in black. A lot of words. <laughs> Next to that is a Nightcore Tiki glow in the dark flashlight. I actually thought that was a Rovibon. That's really close to a Rovivon design, Nightcore. Just saying. Uh, next to that is a Tritium Fob from AliExpress. And then beneath that is, uh, I guess these, all these things are attached to a keychain, a Leatherman Squirt PS4. The pin in the middle of the photo is a big edit design bolt action in stonewashed titanium. And then next to that is a pry bar that is a titanium pry bar from EDC4U over on Etsy filled with Tritium tubes. Um, 
the watch that you see next to that is is really why I chose this. It's what jumped out at me the most. It, this is the Casio Royale or AE 1200, and it has been modified with a custom translucent loomed faceplate and custom tricolor loomed LCD. Uh, looks really, really cool. And then finally, the, the knife to the far right is a Civivi Elementum in brass. But really, at the end of the day, that added stuff to this Casio is just Excellent. There's another guy who's part of this community that, that modifies Casio's watch and carry, um, but I've not seen this level of customization on this, the multicolor, translucent, glow-in-the-dark stuff. I think that's amazing. Only problem I have with these, these Royales is the bracelet, right? If you want a Casio on a bracelet, these bracelets that come on them suck. They're very, very cheap and thin and lightweight, and they pull hairs. I don't like them, but I love the look of this. I would wear this if it had a bracelet that didn't suck. Put it on a, a NATO, but I'm really, honestly, at the end of the day, not a super big NATO fan. But this one I like. This is from Prometheus Design Works, but I still don't love NATOs. Anyway, they said, uh, I've been thinking about a knife with Loom. What do you think of Glow Rhino? On paper, the specs seem pretty decent for the price. So I haven't actually used or handled any Glow Rhino knives. Um, I do have like the Prometheus Design Works with the glow thumb stud. It's just got glow in the dark thumb studs. And then I also have a tritium thumb stud for my bug out. So that's from Glow Rhino and that's cool, but it's only glow on one side, which I kind of hate. I, I do still like that the Prometheus Design Works Invictus has glow thumb studs, but there's a bit of a problem and it kind of comes back to what I was saying about my watch. Um, if there's no sunlight, the glow in the dark doesn't work. Right. So if you keep your knife in your pocket with the glow thumb studs and it never sees sun, they're never going to glow. So the only way that you would actually have glow thumb studs that actually work is if you always have your knife out using it and then at night you can still see it. But if it, if it stays in your pocket, they're never going to get charged up. So tritium works way better, which leads us to glow rhino. I've not used any other stuff. I don't know but I do wish more knives had tritium either in the handles, thumb studs, backspacers, whatever. I love tritium. I want it on everything. There's not much else I can say besides the fact that this is sick. I love glow in the dark stuff. I love more. I wish more stuff had glow in the dark or tritium. I've said that like nine times. Thank you for sharing. You don't have a second entry into the giveaway. The final submission this week comes from Gabriel Baker or Jen, Jen hero. I'm not sure if that's on Instagram or in the discord. I don't know. They didn't mention it and it's, I, I don't know, Jin, Jin Hero, that's all I know. Um, they said, not a complete carry, but my two most carried EDC knives. So yes, again, not a complete carry, but modified gear. We have a Blade HQ Benchmade bug out in 20 CV with a complete hardware swap. We have crossfade copper scales, copper thumb studs, and backspacer, not pictured, all by Flytanium. I call it my cop out. And then we also have a Knives Plus exclusive QSP Penguin in S35VN. I swapped the scales with brass scales from a D2 Penguin. I also owned and put a thumb hole in the blade myself. Both knives are general use. The Benchmade sees more use at work because the axis lock is easier to manipulate when wearing gloves. Um, what first caught my eye was the Penguin. I didn't realize it was a Penguin at first because I'm not used to seeing the, the thumb hole. And it took me a second. I mean, I, I'm familiar with the shape of them, but it, it just kind of caught me off guard. I wasn't expecting to see a penguin with a thumb hole, and that's ultimately why I chose this. Um, also, the fact that this has been swapped around, right? Um, I've gotten many knives and swap blades and stuff because I often like a, an, an unusual or not originally offered configuration, right? So I have all three wear knives from the Lucas P. I have all three of those, and I blade swapped two of them because I liked the black blade with the um, satin finish handles, and then I liked the satin blade with the micarta inlay handles, and neither of those were options that were available at the launch. So I like seeing stuff like that happen. The thumb hole is not a mod that I'm comfortable doing myself. Um, it takes time, takes a lot of patience, and getting it just right. The placement right, as well as not heating up the blade too much to ruin the heat treat, all sorts of stuff can happen when you're we're putting a hole into hardened steel and not screwing up a knife. So Kudos to you. I'm not going to put a hole in any of my knives. Really cool. I've not seen the uh, copper and black configuration yet. Uh, really, really neat stuff. So thank you for sharing. And uh, thank you all for sharing. Anybody who did submit, you're entered into the giveaway that I'm going to do. Uh, like I said last time, we're doing them probably quarterly. Um, but if you're featured in a video, you get an additional entry. Or if you're posted over on Instagram, same thing. So 
With that said, the next EDC Weekly, which is going to be probably after Blade Show, because uh, I got some stuff going on next week, then Blade Show, and then I'll be back to do another EDC Weekly. For that one, let's say, let's do another Bougie Carry. We've not done a Bougie EDC Weekly in a while. Those are always fun to see some really, really excessively expensive stuff. So share your most expensive Bougie Carry, and that will be the next episode. So all you have to do to submit is go to edcw.co, Submit there and you're entered to be featured in the video, but also the giveaway. So thank you all once again. Uh, if you want to support what I'm doing here, there's a Patreon link in the description down below, but also you can just hit the links. Everything I talked about in this video will be linked. Many of those are affiliate links. So if you click that, I will get a little bit of a kickback. So thank you very much. If you use those links, you help supporting what I'm doing here and keeping the show going. But that's it for now. Thank you all once again. And until next time, carry on.